Hey guys, Zach here. Today I want to take a few minutes and go over the new 46 liter Spectre Pack from Triple Odd Design. Um, now if you've been following along, you know that the 46 liter pack is the largest of the three packs that have been released by Triple Odd Design over the past month. Um, in a previous video I did some overview and impressions of the 22 liter pack, but uh, today I wanted to go ahead and dive into this 46 liter which I received just yesterday. So I spent a little bit of time with the pack last night and this afternoon, loading it up, transferring contents over from a Kelty pack that, uh, that I typically use for this type of application um, and getting it all kind of kitted out roughly how I would use it. It's not perfect, but really I wanted to show you just the overall capacity of the pack, some of the ways you might consider using it, some of the things that uh, you might consider carrying in it. I wanted to start off this video before I dive into the pack and give you guys a little runway overview or a runway view of what the pack actually looks like on me. Now I am 6'1", 180 pounds and I went through the instructions from Tad. They have previously put a video up for on how to adjust the pack for your size. And I've got this pack pretty well set up for, for myself personally. So it gives you an idea of what the pack will look like on you depending on how, how big you are. Um, how much you weigh and how tall you are. So give you a couple more looks at it. Waist belt right around my hip. Got some pouches hooked onto it already. Some GP pouches and some S pouches. Alright, so there's a good look at the pack. Um, I'm gonna jump into the, the internal contents and some of the features of the pack. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this video off and I'll come back here and we'll go through uh, the pack itself. Okay guys, now that you've got a look at, of how the pack looks on me, I'm going to take a few minutes and walk through what I've actually loaded into the pack last night and a little bit this afternoon as I kind of brainstorm um, just how I intended to use it. Like I said a few minutes ago in the video, I transferred all the contents from a Kelty pack that I've used for a number of years and the Kel Kelty Falcon 4000 pack, which is a 60 liter pack that I have been using for backpacking and camping and a variety of other things up to this point. I'm going to go ahead and be retiring that pack and using this new uh, TAD 46 liter Spectre. Now right out, of, right out of the gate, you know I'm going from a 60 liter pack, uh, a little bit more if I was to use the upper sections of the pack, to a 46 liter pack in this, uh, this new Spectre. Um, so, I'm going to show you just everything from my other pack that I was able to jam into this pack and then of course you know if you've been following along that there are several accessories that, uh, that the TAD team is releasing, has released or will be releasing this week that expand this pack up beyond even 60 liters worth of capacity if you set it up right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at everything that I have stuffed into this, this guy right now. So first and foremost, these Four-way tweed stretchable pockets on the side are the same as the Spectre 22 liter and the 34 liter. You have one on each side. Um, you can use them for water bottles or any number of other other things you might want to stuff in there. You notice that I have a uh, an ITS tactical little pouch with a uh, with a soft heat tourniquet stuffed in there on the side. There isn't necessarily a real rhyme or reason to how I have this pack set up just yet. I just really wanted to kind of max it out. Uh, and, it's, and it's almost stock configuration and see everything that I could fit into it. So, tourniquet, if I were to take off the helmet caddy or the hood here off the top, it buckles in the front and it buckles in the back here. Right off the top, it's got a straight zipper slot here at the top. It doesn't have any other further organization um, panels or anything like that inside. It's just kind of a giant dump sack. On the back side it does have the same stretch tweed as these side pockets so you can expand it a good amount um, if you really wanted to stuff it full. What I chose to use this for was I actually stuffed my mountain house freeze-dried food in here and I have uh, a few different ones. You can see them pull them out. I could have fit more I just want to kind of give you and I guys an idea of what you might consider using some of these, these uh, pockets for. So I've got three meals in there. I've got a, uh, a bit of paracord wrapped up on some cardboard here. 
And then I also have in mine uh, some Kind Bars, some Quest Bars, and some miscellaneous odds and ends, some miscellaneous other cordage, as well as some, uh, some zip ties and stuff. I kind of have stuffed in there in the top. Now I could have fit probably about five or six at least, maybe even more if I got really, really clever with how I fit them in there of these mountain house or similar freezer, freezer dried packs in this top, top compartment. Personally, that's probably how I would use it because these things are uh, packaged up and they are sealed. Um, not that uh, this LS42 material that these packs are made of is, is completely waterproof, but it is very water resistant. And these zippers on all of these packs are these Euro style uh, water resistant zippers as well. So might be something you would consider using this top caddy or uh, top hood for would be to uh, stuff a full of your, your freeze dried food, your snacks and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that guy aside. I'm gonna go ahead and set aside my freeze dried food and get into the guts of the pack here. Now, I'm gonna turn it over here so you can see a little bit better to the camera. The pack does have its own, own built in compression strap that runs from the front and it also attaches in the back of the pack here. That is to be used for the occasion like I have here where you've expanded the pack up to its full capacity. Now I think I read somewhere that this pack starts at a base 46 liters. If you are to fill it all the way up, meaning you take advantage of all this real estate at the top, that it gets close to 60 liters worth of capacity. Don't quote me on that. That's kind of what, what I'm going off of, um, some of my impressions here on, on uses of this pack. I'm going to go ahead and uncinch the top here, give you an idea of what all I have stuffed in. First off, I've got a uh, ITS Tactical Boo Boo Kit. So not the smallest med kit, but it's got all your band-aids and miscellaneous first aid material that you might need. I have a small Thermarest camping pillow. I have my MSR pot, nested pot. So I've got two pots nested in there as well as uh, my fuel source. Thinking sort of a, a backpacking philosophy of use or backpacking use type setup here. I have my MSR pocket rocket to run my stove so I can cook up my food. Um, and I'm not sure who makes these, but I have a couple of these small lantern pucks. These are waterproof, they float, and they can also be hooked onto things. They have little latches on the top, so I have a couple of those stuffed in there. Again, not a lot of rhyme or reason how I have this thing set up. I wasn't really looking at weight constraints or anything like that. I just wanted to really see how much I could expand, expand the pack to and how much I could ultimately stuff in. Next, everybody knows this, we've got a trusty Tajimag. I have a sub kilo REI sleeping bag. I have some extra socks and underwear, which you should pretty much always keep on you, at least underwear for sure. I have an REI Taj 3 half dome tent. So again, not the smallest backpacking tent, but were to go with a true backpacking small one or two person tent, I'd be able to fit even more into this pack. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that guy aside. I have some miscellaneous extra clothes here. A couple of t-shirts. Some AC shorts. Some AC pants. And that pretty much covers the entire contents of the interior of this pack. Now, from the video here a few minutes ago before I started to unpack it, you noticed I had this thing pretty well stuffed full. I could have fit maybe a little bit more in it if I organized it a little bit better. But the, right there you're looking at about the capacity, the internal capacity of the pack using this entire upper section um, of the pack and having it cinched up tight. My 
tent poles I have on the side of the pack here. This pack has two zipper slots on each side, each side of it, which zip almost all the way down. They zip about three quarters of the way down the side of the pack, which they're very good for stuffing elongated items. In this case, I've stuffed my tent poles in there to kind of have them off to the side. Very functional little pocket there. I don't have anything else in this particular pocket, but you'll notice that these pockets also have hangers built into them, so you could hang, potentially you could hang your water bladder here in the side if you wanted and have it kind of off to the side, or your keys or any other number of other things you might want to, um, to stow here off the side. Uh, maybe some, some dirty clothes or something else you wanted to keep separate from the main compartment of the pack. You'll notice on the other side of the pack you've got the same zipper, same pocket. On this side I've got some trusty UNO cards. You've got to have a little bit of fun while you're out, out and about. Huh? I've got a life straw. I've got my tent stakes. And that's about all I had stuffed into this side. So as you can see, you could fit quite a bit into this pack. Even though it's only really a base 46 liters, you get a lot of additional real estate up here at the top if you really fill this non-rigid area, the top of this pack up kind of to the brim, fill it to the brim. You can fit quite a bit of stuff in there. The only thing I wasn't able to fit in this pack that I used to carry in my Kelty was a I would also be able to jam in my Thermarest camp pad. Um, I'm going to investigate and see if there's any smaller uh, camp pads out there or, or another way to configure this pad to maybe get it fit in here. Um, it is a little bit too fat in this configuration to turn the pack around here for you. To use these, these bottom compression straps, it's a little too fat to fit through there. Now, this might be a case scenario where I want to go ahead and get the transporter tail in which case I could repackage, rebundle this um, camp pad, this Thermarest camp pad, and slide it in underneath the transporter tail and then carry it that way. So these packs, this whole pack series is set up really well for the expandable, um, the expandability and all of the different options you have. A couple of the options you guys probably know are coming is the, there's a hydration pack, there's a, front, there's a chest rig, uh, there's a front pack, and there's a whole bunch of different pouches within the tab lineup that you can use to expand this pack out even further to get further storage uh, capabilities out of it. Onto the front of the pack, I've got my spoon, my fork and my spoon, which are American Kami. I think uh, Boker now makes a version of these, and I think actually Tad had a version of these as well at some point. Well, I've got my titanium spoon spork and my fork. I just simply tuck those down in the molly straps and uh, that seems to work really pretty well for me. I have um, a small American Kami fixed blade hooked to the molly of the, on the front of the pack. And I also have a Survive Knives GSO 10, so the big boy, lashed to the side here. I'm using the, the side four-way stretch tweave pocket as well as some, uh, some lashing buckles here to optimize or to take advantage of the, the loop webbing here down the side of the pack. I have the knife, the uh, webbing, again this is aftermarket webbing, woven through the sheath of the knife through that webbing to kind of hold it in place and then when it's actually full, when this pack's actually full, the compression straps on the side actually hold this guy in place really nicely. All in all, that is my main uh, setup for this pack, at least at this point. Let's dive into a few of the other features and some of the other stuff on this pack that I didn't touch on. Obviously, you guys notice here down the front, you've got a nice weatherproof zipper where you can open up to the internal contents of the pack. On the inside, just for shits and giggles, because I had one laying around, I went and uh, attached a control panel and some some um, some chem lights, some playing cards, some band aids, some miscellaneous odds and ends. I have stuffed into these pockets. I had to stuff that guy in there without much issue. 
can get it on camera here, I'm gonna come around, you'll see that there's actually there's actually the same kind of hangers that are in most of the tad packs now here at the top of uh, the Spectre 46, Spectre 22, and so on. So you can hang your control panels, um, you can hang a water bladder here, of course you've got another hook. Just about anything else you could, that you can already hang off of these, an admin panel maybe, you can go ahead and, and optimize these for in this pack as well. The pack, the sheet of the pack is HDPE, so it's that plastic, uh, flexible HDPE backing. But this pack is actually also supported by aluminum stays which there are there is a, um, a horizontal one here across the top and you can see it's velcroed in and you can take it out if you want to and there is also center here sorry this guy's kind of hard to wield around one down the center you see right here you can also uh, take that out there if you wanted to as well so you can get to those both very easily very cool on the inside of the pack I didn't use it for anything but I, I think it bears uh, it's worth showing there is a separate kind of a giant stuff pocket along the back of the pack here I didn't use it for anything but it might be one pocket where you would drop down your water bladder into or maybe you would stuff uh, dirty clothes or something you wanted to keep separate from from some of your other stuff maybe some trash you would stuff down down there behind in that pocket there maybe be better showing it from the front this thing is a little bit unwieldy as it is a large pack but essentially this entire area right here behind here is, an, is one large pocket that goes from about three quarters of the way up the pack all the way down to the bottom you also have, and I won't be able to show them on the camera, I'm not even going to attempt it, a couple of small loops at the bottom of the pack. So if you wanted to hook any of your, uh, again, your control panels or anything else to the bottom of the pack and run it up vertically upwards, you could do that as well. There aren't any hooks on the side, so there aren't any uh, tabs or, or loops on the side to use. Interior of it's pretty basic, but really all you, you need in a pack like this is uh, a lot of internal storage capability. You don't need a lot of admin panels and everything else. So they, they hit the mark on what the actual function or what the purpose of a pack this size is really for, at least in my opinion. The way I had it loaded out was about perfect. Um, I could have stuffed in a little bit more food. I would have had some water and stuff with me as well, uh, stuffed into it that I, I didn't have it set up for for the, for the sake of this video. Down the front of the pack, have the three rows of molly webbing that run down the front. Um, they are split in half by the zipper though. So you could potentially hook a control, well, not a control panel, but an OP1 um, or the big GP pouch across the front of this pack. However, I don't know that I would personally do that because you are going to go across the zipper to set that particular pouch up. Either those pouches take up um, four rows of, of molly webbing so either one of those setting it up on the front of this pack is going to constrict you a little bit and cut across this zipper that may or may not be an issue for you but it is worth mentioning each of these side stuff pockets these four-way tweed stuff pockets have a, uh, a loop in the bottom here where you can attach uh, an ice tool, potentially an axe if it's uh, if you don't have a sheath, um, hammer, other type of tools. You can use this loop and run them up vertically through the side pocket, similar as the other two packs in the series. Onto the back of the pack, the back and the belt. Before I let you guys go here. If you follow along in the instructional videos for adjusting this pack, it's actually fairly easy. There is one, two, three, four, five or so rows of webbing that are all tightly woven here on the back of the pack that allow you to raise and lower the main shoulder straps and the main back pad. Now, again, I'm about six foot one. I have mine all the way currently set on the top 
loop. So that gives you an idea, uh, maybe if you're trying to do a quick setup and you're about six foot one, you might want to go ahead and just arbitrarily set yours up to start at that height and then kind of go from there and see how it feels on you. The belt is fully removable. Um, if you watch the, adjust, the belt adjustment video, the, the lumbar support here peels off. There's a little bit of Velcro there. And the belt itself is also Velcroed into the bottom of the pack here. Right here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take it off because I don't want to readjust mine. I want to leave it kind of right where I have it. I have it set up perfectly for myself. Uh, you get, you do have a little bit of height adjustment here with the belt. You can kind of shimmy it up, up and down a little bit if you want. Uh, the main thing with removing the belt is actually adjusting the width that you want it. So they've got a nice set of grid squares here where you can count. I have mine two over from the end where I have my belt per currently set up. So if you're a little bit bigger around, you can expand this belt and give yourself a little bit more wrap around your waist in the front without actually completely maxing out your adjustment webbing here in the front, okay? Or you could run it without any belt if, uh, if that suits your fancy. I typically prefer uh, a belt on a pack this, of this size myself. Your mileage may vary. So I'm going to go ahead and hook that back up. Flip the pack back over. On the belt, in the front of the belt, you have four rows of molly webbing on each side of the belt. So unlike the Spectre 22 liter pack, where the pockets are sewn in and you have no webbing at all on the belt, the 46 liter has four rows of, not four rows, but four grids, vertical grids of webbing here across each side of the belt. This side I've gone ahead and used an S1 pouch. I've got a multi-tool stuffed in there. On the other side, I went ahead and used the smaller GP pouch. Just so happened to be what I have on hand currently. Um, and I've got some fire starting equipment, some uh, flashlight, uh, some f a few uh, quick grab things that I might need lighter. Um, compass and so on I have stuffed in here as well. What I would recommend is that you consider, based on the lack of admin capability within the center of this pack, that you consider either getting yourself an OP1 or the larger GP pouch and setting up one of those on one of these belt sides. That's going to give you a lot of that admin. You could stuff your, you know, your fire starters, your flashlights, your miscellaneous tools, your pens, all of that stuff. It'll keep all that stuff nice and organized, which you're not going to get in the core of the rest of the pack. You're really not going to get that. And again, for me, I'm not planning on setting up any sort of uh, pouches on the front of this pack. If anything, I'm going to run a transporter tail on it and get a little bit more uh, large item um, capacity across the front here, which kind of almost renders these molly loops a little, not useless, but a little less usable because you'd have to take the transporter strike off to get to, or down to get to those items. So I'm going to call this part one. I'm planning on using this pack on about a 10 mile hike tomorrow and uh, not, I'm not really going to camp with it or anything, but I am going to load it up and I am going to hike about 10 miles, do a little bit of canyoneering up Fossil Creek here in Arizona in the sun, in the heat load it up and I'm going to do a separate video, separate kind of follow-up video on uh, my findings on just how well it carries. Um, anybody that's backpacked uh, or anybody that's planning on backpacking should know that if you're going to go any kind of distance, any kind of distance, you're going to want to test out your gear beforehand. You don't want to get into a, a 20 or 30 mile hike and find out your stuff's uncomfortable and it's not gonna work for you. So I like to test my stuff out in, in a non full use capacity. In this case, I'm just gonna hike with it five miles in, five miles out, and then get a good feel for the setup of the pack, how easy it is to access the pockets, how it feels, the overall, you know, the overall height and, and belts uh, settings, if those are working well for me. Um, and I would encourage uh, you to do the same on, on any, any pack, even if it's not a tad pack, to go ahead and and try it out on a short excursion beforehand so you don't get yourself into trouble later. Anyway guys, I hope I touched on, uh, on most of the points. I didn't really cover the material on this, on this pack because it's the same as the, as the Spectre uh, 22 liter and the 34 liter 
and a lot of the pouches and different pieces that uh, Tad's putting out now. Uh, but just to touch on it really quickly before I let you go, this uh, the gray material here in the front is the LS42 Dimension Poly in it. Um, long life, uh, kind of a sailcloth. It's made up of this, uh, the pack is also made up of several areas of this four-way tweed stretch material and so on. So I, uh, I feel like this pack is going to last me a long time, but uh, time, time and use will be will tell the tale on, uh, on just how well it, it uh, works for me. I'm really excited to get some of the other components for it and really fully test out uh, a bunch of different setups with this pack. So this isn't a one size fits all pack, this is a one size fits all base pack that you can turn into any specific adventure you're setting yourself up for. Really, really excited about this line. Um, Hopefully this product line, hopefully I didn't get too rambly on you guys. Hopefully you got a little bit something out of this, this video. Uh, until next time, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching.